<laughs> so uh, this talk is dedicated to Bob Moody. And uh, I want to start with mentioning that uh, indirectly, he played a significant role in my research and my life. So 20 years ago, I came to Alberta for a job interview. And at that time, I knew practically nothing about Alberta. And after my arrival, we had a, a lunch in the faculty of club, and we had a great conversation with uh, Robert Moody. He talked a lot about the department in UFA, about the people, about the research, about the opportunities for doing research in Alberta, in particular in Canada. At that time, uh, Bump Station was opened recently, and if I'm not wrong, Bob Moody was the research director of this Bump Station, and uh, he explained me the grant system in Canada. It was so attractive that I decided immediately I will accept the offer. And so I came to Alberta, and since then I was involved in too many research projects with nice people, colleagues, and friends. And uh, uh, roughly speaking, my research productivity increased twice since then. And um, today I want to give a report about a joint project with uh, four people, with Philippe Gilles, Erhard Nair, Arturo Pianzole and my student Vladimir Yegorov. And uh, this is the longest ever project I had in my life. It lasted maybe seven years or eight years. I don't remember precisely. Yesterday I counted that with my participation on one topic on conjugacy of Cartan sub algebras, we published seven papers only with my participation and Arturo uh, and Philippe publish more uh, papers about closely related topic on uh, torsors of Laurent polynomial rings. So all together, we, uh, just to prove one theorem, we publish maybe 230 pages. It's really very long project, and I have no opportunity to describe the uh, uh, technical difficulties or details. What I am going to do, I just want to give a rough idea how we proceeded. So this is a motivation and let's uh, introduce uh, the main hero in this talk. Uh, throughout, I will denote by small k uh, ground field. So it, it will be supposed characteristic zero because it's very essential uh, assumption in positive characteristic there are not many results, and so it's open. Everything is open. Probably it's a good project for PhD student to generalize to positive characteristics case. And when I'm talking about Lie algebras, K will be supposed to be algebraically closed. But when I will be talking to torsors, K is not necessarily algebraically closed. So the definition, what is a Cartan subalgebra? maximal adjoint diagonalizable. We start from an arbitrarily algebra G over K and assume H is a subalgebra. And we say it's maximal diagonalizable or simply a Cartan subalgebra if it satisfies two conditions, standard conditions. Uh, first of all, it's diagonalizable with respect to joint representation. So if you have a joint representation, it must have eigenvectors, uh, eigenvalues, and it must be maximal with uh, respect to this property. So uh, this is what we called uh, MAD subalgebra. So let's consider a simple example, which is relevant to my talk. Uh, so we'll consider the ring R is the ring of polynomials in one variable. We consider the smallest case SL2 over R. And uh, this Lie algebra G can be viewed either over K or over R. View it over K, it's infinite dimensional. And, uh, but over R, it has finite type, it's uh, finite ring. So let's take a diagonal matrix one minus one. Clearly it's K diagonalizable with respect to joint representation. But uh, in contrast, if you consider matrix T, diagonal matrix T minus T, it's not K diagonalizable. 
So in this example, maximal diagonalizable algebra is just uh, the span of just one matrix A. So uh, it's easy to see that it's maximal and the joint diagonalizable. So what is the main question? The main question, oh, uh, one more piece of uh, terminology. We say that two maximal adjoint diagonalizable subalgebras, or just simply Cartan subalgebras, are conjugate if there is a K automorphism of Lie algebra, which takes one subalgebra into the second one. It's standard terminology. And uh, the main question which I want to talk today when uh, two Cartan subalgebras are conjugate. So this is uh, the main topic, and uh, I try to explain that to answer this question for some class of Lie algebras, it took many, many years. So let's consider two examples uh, when the situation was known before our project started. So first we have classical theorem due to Chevalier. Uh, we consider a simple finite dimensional Lie algebra over algebraically closed field K, then all Cartan subalgebras are conjugate. So this is classical theorem, and it, the Lie algebra is simple. You know the classification, it has types, A, B, C, and so on. So, uh, and uh, we will say that this Lie algebra has nullity one, uh, zero. I will justify the terminology later. So this is uh, first, uh, remark and second remark this is extremely useful theorem everyone who was involved in the representation theory knows that uh, it's useful for instance uh, if you want to check that the root system attached to a given uh, Cartan subalgebra is an invariant of Lie algebra uh, one needs to use this conjugacy theory uh, the, the situation is assume you are giving two different Cartan subalgebras in the same Lie algebra. So you can attach your system to one of them, you can attach your system to the second one, but you want uh, to have the same root system. And to prove that a root system is well defined, you need to apply this result of Chevalier. Okay. So second example, it's uh, celebrated Katz-Modili algebras. And uh, Katz-Modili algebras are given by generators and relations with the use of generalized Cartan subalgebra. So I'm not going uh, to state the definition of uh, uh, Katz-Modili algebras, but instead I will show you the realization, how they look like. So, and I will be considering only a fine cuts moodily algebras. So, realization is the following we start from an arbitrary simple finite dimensional Lie algebra over K. It's like a, a situation in the case of Chevalier theorem. Then, what we do, uh, we take the ring to R, which is ring polynomials, Laurent polynomials in one variable. Then, we uh, take base change. And uh, we add two more one dimensional subspaces. So, so we add KC and KD. What is this and how it looks like as a Lie algebra? So, the element C is central. So, I, I'm uh, trying to explain the uh, Lie bracket in this L hat Lie algebra. So C is central. If it's central, it's clear how to multiply with any other elements. And D is a degree derivation. Uh, so the Lie bracket in L hat with uh, such elements are given by this formula. So it's uh, standard degree derivation. So using this formula, you know how to multiply elements from L hat with DC. And, uh, this uh, piece uh, G, uh, R, uh, GR inside the L hat is not Lie subalgebra. So you cannot just uh, translate the Lie multiplication in LG hat. Oops. What is it? Doesn't work. Uh, but the formula is the following. So uh, let's take two typical elements, L1, L2, in this uh, piece base change, and then we multiply inside L hat using this formula. 
you multiply x and uh, y as uh, elements in g so this is well defined and then you have the uh, central uh, piece multiplication so here uh, angle brackets x y are a killing form and delta is a chronicler symbol so this is a realization of a finely algebras, uh, cosmodily algebras. So, uh, and using uh, this realization, you can develop your feeling when you work with these objects. So you have killing form and you have uh, Kronecker's delta. So again, L hat is not the algebra over R. It's only the algebra over K. And view it over K, it's infinite dimensional. This is first remark. And uh, second remark, inside L hat, you have L. In view it uh, as a subset in L hat, L is not a uh, least of algebra, but uh, it has a, a, a algebra structure we started with. And uh, this piece L can be viewed in both ways. Is over R, then it's a finite type, or over K, then it's infinite dimensionally algebra. Uh, second remark we say that this L hat is a Lie algebra of nullity one, and I will justify the terminology shortly. So we have nullity zero, we have nullity one. And what about Cartan subalgebras in this L hat? So uh, an example of such a Cartan subalgebra is the following. You start from G, G is a simple uh, Lie algebra finite, of finite dimensional vacay. You can uh, choose a standard, uh, some uh, Cartan subalgebra inside G. So like we started from SL2, you, you choose a diagonal matrix one minus one. And so this is a choose analog. Then what you do, you consider uh, this H and you add the central part and you have the, uh, you add the derivation part and all together, this is a Cartan subalgebra in L hot. So this is maximal adjoint diagonalizable subalgebra. It requires a proof, but I have no time to prove. Okay, and we have uh, famous Cus Peterson theory, which says, which answers the main question in this talk positively. So all Cartan subalgebras in L hat are conjugate. And uh, so if you know one representative H to uh, describe all Cartan subalgebras, you need to apply to H all automorphism, K automorphisms of your Lie algebra in question. Okay, uh, so let me mention the, uh, just one nice uh, ob observation which we will uh, apply in general setting. So if you are uh, getting a maximal adjoint diagonalizable subalgebra, uh, you have uh, uh, eigenvalues with respect to joint representation and uh, they form an extended fine root system. And there are two types of uh, roots which appear, anisotropic and isotropic uh, roots. So the terminology comes from uh, comparing the lengths of roots. There is a canonical uh, bilinear form on the root space. And if the length is zero, you say it's isotropic root. If it's non-zero, anisotropic root. But uh, what else you can do? Uh, you can consider subalgebra generated by uh, uh, anisotropic roots. Uh, generated by anisotropic roots, I mean consider eigenvalues, not eigenvalues, eigenvectors. Consider eigenvectors uh, and, gener and uh, generate a Lie subalgebra. And we say that this Lie subalgebra L tilde is called the core of L hat. So. Uh, in our situation, in the case of uh, a fine cosmodily algebras, L uh, tilde looks like you take L, which L is a, a, G, a base change for G from uh, K to R, and you add central piece. So there is no derivation part. And this is precisely is the core of this Lie subalgebra. 
and it's ideal it's ideal and uh, to restore the Lie structure of L in L, remember I said L is not Lie subalgebra in L hat, but to restore the Lie bracket in L, what you can do, you can take L hat and factor out mod center. What you have, uh, you have a Lie algebra and it's called the centralist core. It doesn't contain the center. So altogether, we have the following diagram in this case. You have uh, a cosmodity algebra, fine, L hot. Inside you have a big ideal, which is called the core of this subalgebra. And uh, you have factor out modular center, you have the centralist core. So this is a typical picture which will appear shortly in general situation. So now I, I want to introduce extended finely algebras. So uh, this is a, a multivariable analog of a fine Cosmodi algebras. So how we can uh, generalize uh, Cosmodi algebras? So, so there is a, a first way to generalize. Instead of considering Laurent polynomials in one variable, you consider multiple var variables. So you take uh, Cosmodi uh, take uh, uh, R to be Laurent polynomials in n variables. Then you uh, you can uh, take as usual G uh, is a simple finite dimensional algebra. Then you can take base change, and you need also to increase the center, and you want to include some uh, uh, derivation part, and then what you get is called uh, toroidal uh, Lie algebra. So this is some particular cases of extended defined Lie algebras. So the second way, uh, like in uh, Cosmode uh, Lie algebra theory, instead of split situation, uh, I, I say split situation, I mean uh, you start from G over algebraically closed field and it's split Lie algebra. And instead of that, if your Lie algebra has auto automorphisms, non trivial, you can twist. And uh, after twisting, what you get, you have twisted Cosmode uh, Lie algebras. In case of one variable, in case of one variable, uh, the twisting leads to what we call quasi uh, split case. Quasi split case means that your Lie algebra, twisted Lie algebra, has a Borel uh, Lie sub uh, algebra. And uh, you cannot get more twisted uh, Lie algebras because of cohomological dimensions. Z the ring polynomial in one variable has cohomological dimension one, and uh, there are no more twisted forms. But in case of n variables, you have a huge class of twisted Lie algebras, which are also interesting. And what you can do, you can replace this uh, twist. Does it work highlighting? Ah, uh, so you can uh, replace this piece by uh, twisted forms, twisted form, isotropic or anisotropic, anisotropic do not appear. But, uh, and as a result, you have uh, a general Lie algebra, uh, which, which is called Lie uh, torus. It's also an example of extended defined Lie algebras. So, uh, in this generalization, you have uh, n variables. I will explain they will appear uh, in an intrinsic way, and we call this as a nullity uh, n. So let's uh, do more rigorously introduce the notion of the nullity of Lie algebras. But be before doing this, I want to introduce the general definition of the extended defined Lie algebras. So extended to finally algebras, this is a triple uh, subject to some axioms. Uh, so triple consists of uh, Lie algebra E, we call it E, this is an abbreviation for extended to finally algebras, a subalgebra H, and there is uh, invariant non-degenerate symmetric invariant form. So, and there are five axioms. What is most important in this definition, most important first fact that H is a Cartan subalgebra. It's not arbitrary. So uh, Cartan subalgebra, fixed Cartan subalgebra is a part of the definition of the extended defined algebra. 
And uh, secondly, what is important is uh, if you again perform subalgebra H, you have immediately eigenvalues with respect to joint representation. And what people want, you want that this uh, eigenvalue satisfies a natural set of axioms, which is called extended uh, root system. So we want to uh, get root system. So this is most important data in the definition of the extended friendly algebra. And like in the Cosmode theory, you have two types of roots. You have two types of roots, anisotropic roots and isotropic roots. And if uh, the terminology comes from looking at the lengths of roots. So, and the important fact, which, which is required to prove the, uh, the subset generated by anisotropic roots, uh, no, not the subset, the least algebra generated by anisotropic roots, it's a ideal, which is called the core of the uh, Lie algebra E. So this is intrinsic definition of the uh, core inside of E. So it contains the center, one proves that it contains the center and more importantly, we prove that this ideal is a characteristic ideal. Characteristic ideal means that it's stable with respect to all K automorphisms of this Lie algebra. And if you factorize mod uh, the center, uh, what you get, uh, it's called the centralist core. So everything is intrinsic and uh, we need to uh, introduce the terminology of nullity. What is a nullity? As, okay, so like in the Cosmodely algebras, we have the same type of diagram. It's important diagram because in the way we proceed to prove conjugacy. So, and the question is how ECC centralist score looks like. And this is important. And uh, uh, I want to introduce the terminology nullity. To do so, we need the notion of the centroid of Lie algebra. So the centroid of Lie algebra consists of all linear transformation which commute with a joint representation. So uh, you have uh, this piece is, by the way, I can use it. So, uh, Lie bracket AB could be viewed as uh, you have a joint representation of A, you add on B, then you apply your linear transformation and it, it, commutes, uh, it commutes with this one. So this is linear transformation which commute with a joint representation and this is called the centroid. And it's a miracle fact that the, in our situation, the centroid is precisely the uh, Laurent polynomial rings in n variables. So this is miracle which I cannot explain why it, it happened. So this is Laurent polynomial. If n is zero, if n is zero in this theory, what you get, you get precisely the algebras considered by Chevalier. You have classical situation, finite dimensional, simple Lie algebra or algebraically closed field. So this is why we call it nullity. If n is one, what you get, you get precisely a fine cosmodely algebra. And this is why we call it nullity one. In general case, you have a generalization, multivariable uh, generalization. And there are uh, two possibilities. I'm coming back to the question how the centralist uh, core looks like. And there are two possibilities. Uh, this centralist core uh, can be viewed over Rn. So this is by definition centroid acts on your Lie algebra. So this is a module over the centroid. And uh, it, there are two possibilities. It has finite type, so it's finitely generated as an R module or it's of infinite type. This also can happen. And uh, so you need out of necessity, you need to consider two different classes of Lie algebras, and this is what we did. So in the case of infinite type, uh, there is an explicit description of what you get, and this is the following uh, 
this is the algebra over the quantum torus. So SLL over quantum torus. What is a quantum torus in this situation? This is associative unital associate uh, algebra uh, over K with the following set of generators, XI and XI inverse. This uh, indicates the inverse with respect to each other, and these are relations. So the relation is uh, XI and XI inverse are inverse each other, and they commute using some elements QIJ in K. And matrix uh, organized from QIJ is called the uh, uh, okay, I don't know how they called so associated matrix. And uh, if you want infinite types, there is a natural restriction. At least one entry QIJ must not be the root of unity, at least one. If all QIJ elements in K are roots of unity, then you have a Lie algebra of finite type. So we consider infinite type. So uh, at least one entry must be not root of unity. So this is uh, explicit realization and you can uh, work with this realization. Case two, you have a uh, centrally score of finite type over R. And uh, these are precisely the following. These are twisted form of a, a simple Lie algebra of finite dimension is denoted here G zero. And you take a base change with Laurent polynomials, and then you consider uh, all possible twisted forms. So uh, using uh, Galois twist or torsors, you can twist. And uh, this is how ECC look like. So from this description, it's again miracle fact. It could be viewed over either R over uh, Laurent polynomials. And over Laurent polynomials, it has finite type, or you can view over K, and over K, it's uh, of infinite type. Okay, I explained already when n is zero, you have uh, simple finite dimensional algebras. If n is one, then you get a fine cosmodial algebras. And uh, so the main result and the strategy of the proof. So the main result, uh, as you expect, that all cartons of algebras are conjugate. So uh, there are four people uh, who participated in proving uh, all uh, cases, subcases of the theorem is a difficult theorem. And uh, the final result, all cartons of algebras in extended finally algebras are conjugate. So uh, the meaning, uh, uh, it, it, it answers positively on the particular following question. Assuming the same Lie algebra, uh, you have two Cartan subalgebras. Remember the definition of extended defined Lie algebra. It's a triple. You have Lie algebra and you have fixed Cartan subalgebra. And natural question, assume you have another triple with the same condition. So. Uh, do you have uh, the same type of roots or not? And this theorem answers positively that uh, the root system attached uh, to a fixed Cartan subalgebra is an invariant of your Lie algebra. It doesn't depend on the choice of Cartan subalgebras. So uh, idea of the proof, uh, how we proceed it, and I will uh, consider only finite type because uh, proof re uh, really differs significantly in, in terms of tools used in infinite type and finite type. So in the case of finite type, so let's uh, uh, do the following. What we want, we start from two Cartan subalgebras, H1, H2. And we want to show that they are conjugate. First step, you consider intersection with the core. Core is the ideal. Consider the intersection. What you have, you have H1C, H2C. Certainly, they are joint diagonalizable, but we prove that they are maximal with respect to this property. They are also Cartan subalgebras in the core. So second step. Uh, you go down, you go to the centralist core, you go to the centralist core, you consider the image 
uh, images of these two Cartan sub algebras. What one needs to prove that images are also Cartan sub algebras. Obviously, they are joint diagonalizable, but you need to prove that they are maximal joint diagonalizable. This requires uh, justification. So, step three. So, you are downstairs, you are in the centralist core, and then you want to prove your theorem in this particular case when you consider the centralist core. You must prove that they are conjugate in ECC. This is the most difficult uh, step in the whole business, the most difficult part. And plus step, you need to go up from downstairs, from the centralist core to your original Lie algebra. So you need to uh, lift uh, e, uh, your uh, K automorphism. So on the level of step three, if you prove that they are conjugate, you, uh, you have a K automorphism of the centralist core, and it's not so easy to leave this automorphism to the automorphism of the uh, Lie, original Lie algebra, and lifting is not unique and uh, is not unique and you need to lift in a smart way in order to get conjugacy. So this is also a difficult step. So uh, now uh, I want to describe uh, uh, the bridge which connects infinite dimensional world with a finite dimensional world. So we succeeded in answering this question because we, remove, uh, we moved from uh, Lie algebras, infinite dimensional Lie algebras, we move uh, to, find, uh, to group schemes of finite type. And how we do this, we prove the following uh, result. So, idea is to reduce to the, okay. So now, uh, K is uh, not necessarily algebraically close because I'm going to talk about group schemes over Laurent polynomial rings. And uh, there are no reasons to assume that K is algebraically closed. And uh, we can associate uh, the group scheme. So we consider the automorphism group of your Lie algebra, view it over R. R is a Laurent polynomial rings. You consider automorphism group and you take the connected component and this is a joint semi-simple group scheme over uh, R. So, and uh, an important step is uh, to connect uh, the question of conjugacy of uh, Cartan sub algebras with the conjugacy of maximal split to I in your group scheme. So we constructed a canonical one-to-one -one correspondence between the uh, uh, Cartan sub algebras in the centralist core and the set of maximal split to I in your group G. Your group G is a group scheme of finite type of Laurent polynomial rings. And under this correspondence, we prove that the conjugacy of Cartan sub algebras is completely equivalent to the question of conjugacy of maximal split uh, to I in your group scheme. Uh, let me remind you that uh, in the case of uh, group schemes over fields, not over rings, there is a classical result uh, due to Borel T that maximal split to I are conjugate. This is well known, but over rings is not uh, the case in general. It's very difficult question. And uh, there are lots of count examples that maximal uh, split to I are not necessarily conjugate. And uh, again, let me emphasize also one uh, fact that uh, at the end of the whole story, we constructed automorphism, K automorphisms uh, for conjugacy of Cartan sub algebras using this up points of your group G. So this is probably a part of the uh, next talks about uh, uh, automorphism group of extended defined Lie algebras or uh, Kasmudi Lie algebras. And uh, in the theorem of Kas Peterson, they say that uh, there is K automorphism uh, which uh, uh, connects to Cartan sub algebras, but there is no information how it looks like. 
automorphism uh, is very, very precise. Our points of this group G, and then we need to lift uh, to the case of E. So this is additional information which could be useful also. Okay, now uh, let's forget about Lie algebras uh, and we come to the following natural question. Assume you again a group scheme, a reductive group scheme over ring R and assume you have two to write. And the question is when they are conjugate. So uh, to answer this question, one can consider the following functor. You consider the category of all uh, ring uh, extensions of R. So you consider R algebras and you have a functor which goes from uh, S points to sets. And uh, formally speaking, we consider all elements in your group scheme, S points in your group scheme, which takes one torus into another one. So this functor could be empty, so in general. But if it's non-empty, one can show that it's representable by a scheme over R, and uh, we can say even more. Uh, so what kind of uh, scheme you have which represents this functor? So let's make the following observation. If you consider the normalizer of the fact uh, of the first maximal, uh, not necessarily maximal, of the first torus T1, and then normalizer acts simply transitively on this functor F. If it acts simply transitively, this means that the scheme which represents this functor is a torsor over this group, normalize of T1. So let's say this is C. It, by construction, it follows that if you twist first torus uh, T1 with C, you have T2. So in particular, if you assume that T1 and T2 are I uh, are split like in our situation. So I go back to our situation. So one can show that this uh, uh, torsor C lives not only in the normalizer, it lives in the centralizer uh, of your torus T. Centralizer is a subgroup of finite index in the normalizer. So it lives here. And the advantage is normalizer is not connected group scheme, but centralizer is connected and this is reductive. So you do not go beyond uh, reductive group schemes. So this is an obstacle for conjugacy uh, uh, maximal split to I in general situation. So this is a reductive group scheme. And uh, this uh, obstacle in our situation, it has one additional uh, wonderful property. Uh, the property, it will be a toral torsor. So the notion of toral torsor was introduced by uh, probably Philippe Gilles and uh, Arturo Pianzola. I didn't see before uh, in the literature. And uh, uh, what is a toral uh, torsor? We say the torsor is a Toral, if you have the following, you have a group scheme, you have a torso twist. The result is also a reductive group scheme over R. And if it contains a maximal torus, not necessarily split, maximal torus, we say that the torso is a toral. And you have the subset uh, uh, of tor uh, you have the subset of toral torsors. This is a subset, it sits inside of set of all torsors. So in our situation, our obstacle for uh, uh, conjugacy of maximal split to I, or which is equivalent obstacle for the conjugacy of Cartan subalgebras is the toral torsor. This is a wonderful fact. So we go back to our situation. Our group scheme is an automorphism group of the centralist core. We could take connected component because we want to work in the category of uh, reductive group schemes. And you again, two maximal split to I. And there is an obstacle for conjugacy which lives in the centralizer uh, coefficients uh, in the centralizer of T1. And this torsor uh, is uh, toral. So, uh, so uh, this factor requires a proof. Why it's a toral uh, uh, 
torsor? Why the obstacle is toral? Uh, the reason is uh, you consider centralizers of T1, C2, and from the nature of the question which appeared, uh, these two group schemes, H1, H2, have maximal tori. So this, is, this comes from the nature of the in, all involved objects. And as I said before, if you uh, twist uh, H1 with uh, uh, C, you have H2. H2 has a maximal torus. So out of necessity, your obstacle is a toral uh, torsor. So, and uh, whatever you do in this business and conjugacy of Cartan subalgebras, you must answer the question, is the obstacle trivial or not? And for that, uh, what we did, we just classified all torsors regardless of the conjugacy of Horton subalgebras. So again, I changed the letter. I consider each re reductive group scheme arbitrary regardless of the Horton subalgebras. We consider each of the Laurent polynomial rings and we want to classify all torsors. And the idea is the following, to use some kind of local global principle. So what is a local gl uh, global principle? So you again carrying R, so we can call this as a global object. This is a ring, but ring is nice. It, it is Laurent polynomial rings. It has variables T1, T2, Tn. To each variable you can associate as a, a uh, discrete valuation, and you can pass to completions with respect to this discrete valuation. And so let's consider such a field. So you, you, you take first variable, you take the completion. So you have, uh, uh, you have a uh, formal power series with respect to T2. Then you add T2 and Tn. So you have an object which is obviously could be called a, a complete field, and uh, you have base change. R is a subset in Fn, so you have the base change. You can consider natural map to each torsors over R. You associate the same torsors, but over the field Fn. So you, uh, you consider it's like a, in the a small neighborhood, analytic neighborhood of the generic point. So. Uh, you have a natural map. This is base change. So what we proved about this uh, base change map? So first fact, it's surjective. We describe the fibers of this uh, map. So what we proved, each fiber of this map contains a unique toral torsor. So in the fiber, there is a unique torsor such that when you twist, uh, your twisted group scheme has a maximal torus. It's a unique. And moreover, elements in the uh, fiber are in one to one correspondence with the, the risky torsors, torsors uh, which are trivial in the risky topology. So you take the unique toral torsor in the fiber, you take a unique toral torsor, you twist your group scheme, and then you consider the risky torsors. And this is one to one correspondence between elements in the fiber and the risky torsors. So this is uh, the result uh, about classification of uh, torsors of reductive group schemes of so Laurent polynomial rings and a classification of toral torsors. Toral torsors are in one to one correspondence uh, with elements uh, torsors over such a nice field Fn. Let me mention that torsors of uh, local fields are well understood from the Briotis series. So there is a nice combinatorial data you can attach and in each particular situation, it's under the control. It's not uh, expl very much explicit, but everything is under control if you work over a complete discrete valued field. So th uh, this is my uh, first remark and uh, Uh, one more remark. If you have just one variable, uh, Laurent polynomial uh, rings with one variable, then our map five is bijection. 
there are no non-trivial Zariski torsors. This is the first paper we started with this project. So we started from this case, description of Laurent polynomial rings in one variable, but of course it was not the main target of, uh, 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 of this project. The main target was conjugacy of Cortan subalgebras, but this is very important case and its uh, proof is very long, it's not simple. And uh, I consider this very nice. So we describe uh, all torsor of uh, Laurent polynomial rings in one variable. Second fact in the process of the proof, we prove also a nice characterization of the so called uh, unramified torsors. So, what are unramified uh, torsors? Assume you are again carrying R. You can consider the spec of R. This is algebraic uh, variety, a fine variety. So, assume it's smooth, then uh, each uh, sub variety of dimension one determines a, a discrete valuation. Then you may pass to the uh, friction field of your ring car. You can see the torsors in the neighborhood of generic point. And torsors of a generic point is called unramified. If it's unramified with respect to each uh, discrete valuation related to sub uh, varieties of co dimension one. So this is uh, terminology unramified cohomology, probably was first introduced by uh, Coliotilian and. Uh, Sounds so okay if I am not wrong, I am not sure. But what we proved in this particular case, in case of Laurent polynomials, that all unramified torsors comes from global objects. They come from torsors defined globally over your ring R. So this is a byproduct of our proof, but I find it's also very interesting. So one more remark. Uh, Remember, uh, I said that uh, phi bars uh, of a natural number of five uh, elements in the phi bars are in one to one correspondent with the, the risky twist. Uh, we made the following conjecture uh, that uh, if you have a fiber, fiber contains a unique toral torsor, if you twist, and if the twist is isotropic uh, reductive group scheme, then we made the conjecture that fiber consists of a unique element in the case of isotropic group schemes. Uh, we didn't manage to prove this conjecture, but a few uh, years later, uh, Anastasia Stavrova proved this conjecture. So here is the result of Stavrova. It's just during pandemic was proved. Uh, so if the twist is isotropic, then the fiber consists of unique element. So let's consider an example that uh, our theorem of classification of uh, uh, torsors is not only formal, it's under the control. So uh, I, I I know you may say, okay, you have some map, it's surjective, you somehow can describe fibers, but in general, uh, in pr practically speaking, you can say pre nothing probably. Let's consider this example. What we're talking about, consider the orthogonal group and F0 is a split quadratic form. So you have a split reductive group H. So what are and of course, you have your ring R. The ring R is the Laurent polynomial rings. So, uh, what are they? What are torsors of R? So, there is a formality, cohomological formalism that torsors with coefficients in the orthogonal group describe or character, uh, how it's written, uh, classifies isomorphism classes of quadratic spaces of the same dimension of the same rank and uh, with the trivial discriminant. So to describe all torsors uh, with coefficients in the orthogonal group is equivalent to describing all quadratic forms of uh, this ring R. So uh, first of all, how torsors look like over a local field? So over local field, if you are given quadratic form, you can use the residue methods. And the characterization is very simple. So every quadratic form is a monomial quadratic form. So it's a direct sum of one dimensional pieces. This is one di dimensional piece 
t to the power i is a monomial in uh, variables t. So, and uh, powers modulus squares is a zero or one. So coefficients are monomial. So coefficients of this quadratic form are monomials. And it's interesting for me that these quadratic forms appeared before when you deal with the computing essential dimension of algebraic groups. They appeared before all this business was done. So this is the description of quadratic forms over uh, uh, local fields. But now attention, please. If you look at the shape of this quadratic form, the coefficients are not power series. Oops. Coefficients are elements in the R. So this quadratic form comes from your ring car. And using uh, our theorem, and by the way, is this quadratic form is a toral, the form is diagonalizable, the corresponding uh, orthogonal group contains a maximal torus. It uh, can be easily seen. So this is a toral uh, quadratic form, it gives over R. And using our theorem, we have the following classification of quadratic form over Laurent polynomial rings. So a quadratic form over Laurent polynomial rings is a toral if and not only if it's diagonalizable. So this is fact, first fact. Second, all other quadratic forms are the risky twists of this quadratic of diagonal quadratic form. So uh, this is very precise uh, classification of uh, quadratic form uh, uh, over Laurent polynomial rings. And uh, in basically, in general case, you can say nothing about how the risk it is look like, because what we're talking about, we're talking about projective modules over such a rings, which are equipped with the structure of quadratic form. So you cannot avoid this projective uh, modules. So over rings, this is a part of the whole series. And basically, you can say more about uh, this and let me state the question which is maybe very weak in case of arbitrary uh, uh, commutative ring how to characterize uh, toral uh, quadratic forms are they diagonal or not so uh, philippe Gil put a good question to me what do you mean by diagonalizable quadratic form so one may think uh, direct sum of projective modules of ring one or more naturally maybe assume a direct sum of projective modules of ring two such quadratic forms are toral and so there is modification of this uh, question so general question how to characterize all toral quadratic forms in the case of an arbitrary ring i don't know the answer on this question so let me uh, finish showing how uh, to get the uh, conjugacy of uh, Cartan subalgebras uh, in the case of uh, centrally score. So, so you start from two maximal diagonalizable uh, list, uh, Cartan subalgebras M1, M2 in the centrally score. Using our CM, a bridge which connects infinite world with finite world you may associate maximal split to i t1 t2 in the uh, automorphism group uh, of central score when i am saying here automorphism group i mean not k automorphism but uh, automorphism over r this is a reductive group scheme so you have an obstacle for the conjugacy xi which is a torsor with coefficients in the uh, centralizer of the first torus so, and we proved also an additional fact. So when you pass the local case, when you pass to the completion with respect discrete valuations associated to your variables, we prove the result that T1 and T2 are still maximal split to i. So in general case, it may happen that over ring, you have maximal split to i, but when you pass to a field, it may be not maximal. It's split, but maybe not maximal. What we proved uh, that there is still a maximal split to i over fields. If the uh, uh, split, uh, maximal split to i over the field, the classical result due to Borel and C says that they are conjugates. 
it says that they are conjugate over the field. If they are conjugate over the field, your torsor becomes trivial. So torsor becomes trivial when you pass to the field. It leaves in the kernel of the natural map phi. But kernel uh, contains also trivial torsor. Kernel contains trivial torsor. You have two torsors, trivial torsor, and your obstacle psi, which is also two row in the kernel. So by our classification theorem, they must coincide. So psi is trivial. Okay. Psi is trivial. If it's trivial, you have conjugacy of maximal split to right. And this also gives the conjugacy of uh, Cartan sub algebra in the centralist score. And what is left is just leaves the conjugacy from downstairs to upstairs. So again, it's non-trivial step, and I don't have time to explain how we lifted conjugacy question. And we're done with the stock, and thank you so much. <laughs>